Hello friends. So in the previous video, we have just seen the definition for slip speed and slip for an induction motor. So slip speed was the difference in speed between the synchronous speed and the actual speed of the rotor. And the slip definition was uh, per unit quantity which represents slip speed. So it is uh, slip speed divided by the synchronous speed. Okay, so that is what we have seen. So if you want to write the equation, the slip speed uh, n slip was equal to the synchronous speed minus the rotor speed which is represented by nm and the slip quantity is defined by synchronous speed minus the rotor speed divided by the synchronous speed okay, if you multiply by 100 you will get in a percentage quantity as well but usually you uh, depending on the numerical they will give some time in percentage or they will give it in per unit quantity so you can select it accordingly so today we are going to see what is the electrical frequency of the EMF that is induced in the rotor. Now in a transformer, because both of the windings are stationary, that is the primary and secondary are stationary, the frequency of the induced EMF in the primary, same as the frequency of the induced EMF in the secondary. But in induction motor, you see that the rotor actually moves. Okay, So there is going to be some change associated here. Now for uh, to understand this properly, I have just uh, cooked up a simple example inside uh, my head. So that let us uh, get into a simple way of understanding all these things. Now, let us start with the story now. For example, there is a girl. Okay. This girl is daily going to maybe her college or somewhere. So she is going daily. But there is a guy here. Okay, there is a guy here who maybe daily disturbs her. Okay, he is daily disturbing her. So one day what happens is that she decides to complain to the local people there. Okay. So what these local people do is that they catch this guy. Now this is just an example for you to understand this. So no hard feelings here. So these local people catch this boy and they decide to punish this guy. Okay. And they decide that this girl itself should give the punishment. Okay. Now they do an interesting thing. What they do is that, that uh, they take the boy. Okay. And they tie up him in a tree. Okay. And they tell the girl that you can slap this guy. Okay. Now the interesting thing what they have done is that for they have made a circle here like this. They have made a circle here like this and they ask the girl, okay, they ask the girl, she can slap this guy every time she crosses this circle, okay. So, if she's, every time she starts from this point and comes back to this point, she can slap this guy, okay. So, assume that the girl is going for rotating, she is doing a revolution, right. So, let us assume that the speed of this uh, girl is 60 rpm. So that means it, she takes, uh, she makes 60 revolutions in one minute. Okay, so in one minute, that means in 60 seconds, she does 60 revolutions. Okay, that means in one second, she is going to make one revolution. Okay, so what it means is that every one second, she will be crossing this point. Right, Every one second, she is going to cross this point. And every time she crosses this point, she will slap him. Okay, understood? So, the frequency of this guy getting slapped here, Okay, the frequency of this uh, get guy getting slapped is one slap per second, right? Because every second she is completing one revolution and every time she comes around, she slaps this guy. Now, for example, the people tell you, see, if you want to uh, run faster, you can run. Now, the 60 RPM, it is a very fast speed. I have just taken it for my own numerical uh, calculations, okay? So, it is easier to calculate with 60 RPM, okay? Now, the girl decides to go at 120 RPM now. Okay, now the girl decides to go at 120 RPM. Okay, that means in 120, so in one minute, in 60 seconds, she will be doing 120 revolution. That is the meaning of 120 RPM, right? So in one second, okay, so in one second, she will be doing two revolutions. So it means that every second, she is going to cover this point twice, okay? Two times she will cover this point every second. That means in every second, this guy will get slapped twice. right? So if you take from 0 to 1 second, in between that time interval, he must have got two slaps. So here now, the frequency of this guy getting slapped is two slaps per second. Okay, this two slaps per second. So this is at 60 RPM. Okay, and this is at 120 RPM. Okay. So, the you can clearly see here that the frequency of getting slapped by this guy, okay, is proportional 
to the speed of the girl okay speed of the girl in rpm now this case is okay because this guy is not moving here he is always in that same point okay so if she wants to uh, slap him more she has to just run faster if she wants to slap him slower that means the frequency of slapping if she wants to reduce that means she will have to run slower now what happens is that somehow this guy breaks from this point here okay he breaks from this point and he himself starts running at say 30 rpm okay so he himself starts running at 30 rpm and for example this girl is running at 60 rpm now okay now earlier what happened this guy was stationary here so she was able to slap him once every second now because this guy is moving himself at 30 rpm she will not be able to slap him every second one slap per second is not going to get valued here to slap him she might take two or three seconds because this guy himself is moving at 30 rpm okay so earlier she might take little time to reach this particular point that is this guy now because he himself is uh, running she will take more time right if she takes more time frequency you know that it is 1 by t so if t is increasing the time that she is going to meet this guy is increasing that means the frequency of him getting slapped will decrease okay so that means to get one slap he might she might have to uh, travel a little bit more time okay or the slaps per second is going to decrease now if you have done a little bit of um, aptitude training for this basic exams you will see that the frequency of slapping the frequency of this guy getting slapped is now actually proportional to the relative velocity between these two relative velocity of the girl and boy okay so in this case because the girl is running at 60 rpm and the boy is running at 30 rpm in the same direction okay now if the boy was running in the opposite direction she would meet him uh, twice as fast okay so he will get more slaps but if you are running in the same direction you see that that frequency of him getting slapped is the relative velocity is proportional to the relative velocity between the girl and boy which is 60 rpm minus 30 rpm so which is equal to 30 rpm okay so you can clearly see earlier case the frequency of getting slapped was proportional to 60 rpm because that guy was stationary now because the guy himself is running the frequency of getting slapped is only 30 rpm that means per second he will not get slapped to get a slap he might take more second or what i am trying to tell here that the frequency of getting slapped okay frequency in the sense slap per second is going to reduce here okay so now this is the same thing that happens in an motor also for example if you see the motor is having a field bs okay stator magnetic field which is rotating at the speed of omega sinc right and when the conductor is stationary initially when the conductor is stationary okay when the conductor is stationary so the emf getting induced in the rotor because the conductor is stationary it will be proportional to the omega sinc or the synchronous speed n sinc okay and once the induction motor starts to move with a speed okay let us write at n sinc here okay and this is n once the induction motor starts to move with a particular speed now the rate at which the magnetic field is going to cut the flux is going to reduce because once the flux was uh, the rotor was uh, stationary the Uh, field will cut it at one speed now when the rotor itself is moving it will take a larger time to reach that point and cut it so the frequency of the uh, induced emf will be less okay or the frequency will be proportional to the relative velocity between the synchronous speed and the uh, rotor speed just like the case here the frequency of him getting slapped reduces when the boy himself starts to run a little bit and that case it was 60 rpm minus 30 rpm so in this case it will be n sin minus nm okay now the synchronous speed formula synchronous speed formula what was that it is ns is equal to 120 f electrical divided by p right for f electrical is equal to ns into p divided by 120 okay now for the finding the rotor frequency that means the emf induced in the rotor bars fr is equal to if you write nr into p divided by 120 that is going to be wrong because in that case we are only considering the rotor speed here but you should not consider only the rotor speed you have to consider the relative speed between the 
synchronous speed and the rotor speed okay that is how it happens here just like the case here when the boy when the boy actually starts to run okay so you have to not take only the boy speed you have to take the relative speed between these two okay so the frequency is not equal to nm into p divided by 120 but the frequency will be equal to n sin minus nm into p divided by 120 okay so this is the rate at which the um, magnetic field that is the stator magnetic field is going to cut the rotor conductors because the rotor itself is moving okay so this is the correct formula here fr is equal to n sinc minus nm into p divided by 120 i hope it's very clear from this particular slapping example i already told you no hard feelings this is just for educational purposes okay so now let us just write this equation because this equation is going to be very important in the study of induction motors so this is n sinc minus nm into p divided by 120 right so i will just do a little bit of mathematical jugglery here so i'll multiply this equation by ns and divide this equation by ns so mathematically this equation is same now you know that see f electrical is equal to that in the system frequency is equal to ns n sinc into p divided by 120 right it's n sinc here n n sinc into p divided by 120 is nothing but f electrical which is the system frequency so i can write that here now so this is equal to n sinc minus nm divided by n sinc into this n sinc into p divided by 120 is f electrical so fr is equal to this value now what was this thing here that we defined in the previous lecture that quantity n sinc minus m divided by n sinc is nothing but the slip or the per unit slip speed okay so i can write fr is equal to s into f electrical okay so if for example the rotor is not moving okay so we'll just uh, take that here so we have found out the relation fr is equal to s into f electrical for example the nm value is equal to zero okay that means the rotor conductor is in its stationary condition that means slip will be equal to n sinc minus zero divided by n sinc or it is equal to one so if you substitute that here fr is equal to one into fe or fr is equal to f electrical okay so that means in the standstill condition the standstill condition okay the standstill condition that is when nm is equal to zero the rotor frequency is equal to the electrical system frequency for example it's 50 hertz in india so it will so the rotor emf induced at this point will be 50 hertz but once the induction motor starts moving okay once the induction motor starts moving that uh, slip value is going to decrease right the slip value is going to decrease that means the rotor frequency also will decrease that means i'll just write it as nm starts to increase okay that means as nm starts to increase the slip value which is equal to n sinc minus nm divided by n sinc so now the rotor is actually starting to turn so as nm increases the slip value decreases that means fr is equal to s into fe slip will start decreasing the frequency of induced emf in the rotor will start decreasing okay so we'll do a simple numeric and i will see what is the quantified values of all these things okay so for example the induction motor so this is first case right and this is the second case when the rotor is moving and the third case when nm for example theoretically it is equal to n sinc so in that case slip will be equal to zero that means fr will be equal to zero but there is not much meaning in this point here because if slip is equal to zero it means that the rotor is not inducing any emf there okay rotor is not inducing any emf there is no current flow there is no torque production okay so this is just a theoretical case but these two cases are important for us now let us do a simple numerical to just get an idea of all these equations that we are dealing with so the, the problem here we are having a 208 volt 10 hp 4 pole 60 hertz star connected induction motor and it has a full load slip of 5 percentage so s full load is equal to 5 percentage which is equal to 0 0.05 right what is the synchronous speed speed of the uh, rotor at rated load rotor frequency at rated load and shaft torque at rated load so these are the quantities which we have defined so let's take one by one so first we have to find the synchronous speed when as synchronous speed ns is equal to n sync is equal to 
120F electrical divided by P, right? So, F 120F electrical divided by P means it is 120, what is the electrical frequency? It is 60 hertz into 60 divided by number of poles is 4, okay? So, if you calculate this, you will get 1800 RPM. So, this is the speed of the synchronous speed. Now, you have to find the speed of the rotor at rated load. Now, when the rotor is under rated load, the slip will have the full load slip. Remember that when the rotor is rotating at rated load, when rated load is applied, okay, it means that you have to take full load slip value. So, what is that uh, formula we can see here? So, we have already seen this equation how to calculate this. You know that Nm is equal to N sync into 1 minus S, right? Now, we want the rotor speed at rated load or full load condition. So, Nm at the full load condition will be equal to N sync into 1 minus slip at the full load condition, right? So, this will be equal to 1800 into 1 minus slip at full load is 0.05, okay? So, this value you will get it as 1710 RPM. So, this is the speed of the rotor at the rated load, okay? Now, next we have to find the rotor frequency at the rated load, right? So, we know that we have just found out that equation FR is equal to S into FE, okay? So, we want to find FR at the rated loaded condition. Okay, so we will take this slip value as slip at full load condition, which is equal to slip at full load into F electrical. So this value will be equal to 0 0.05 into F electrical value is 60 hertz, so into 60. So this is equal to 3 hertz. See, the rotor frequency is so low. So when the stator frequency is 60 hertz, when the motor is rotating at 1710 RPM, the frequency of induced DMF in the rotor is only 3 hertz. Okay, now D. What is the shaft torque? You know that the power is equal to torque into omega, right? So, P shaft, right, is equal to torque at the shaft into omega, right? Omega means omega m. So, torque shaft will be equal to P shaft divided by omega m, right? So, P shaft value they have already given it as 10 HP. So, this is the rated condition and we are finding at the rated load, right? We are finding at the rated load. So, because we are finding at the rated load, we can take the rated values here. So, P shaft is 10 HP, okay? So, that you can convert it into electrical quantities. That is, uh, you can multiply it by 746 so that you can get it in watts. And omega M, what is omega M? Omega M is equal to 2 pi Nm divided by 60. So, this value you can substitute here. So, 2 pi and what is the speed at rated load? It is 1710. So, you have to find the torque shaft at rated load. Remember, it is finding out at rated load. So, every quantity you have to take at rated condition. So, this is the speed at rated load. So, we will substitute that here. So, it is 1710 divided by 60 and this you will get the value as 41.65 and this is torque, right? So, it is Newton meter. Okay. So, this was a simple numerical that we have seen. So, what we have seen today is that the electrical frequency of the induced GMF in the rotor is different from the system frequency. At the starting condition, when the speed is zero, the rotor frequency will be equal to the system frequency or the statum frequency. But once it starts moving, it depends upon the slip speed. So, this is what we have seen uh, in this video. I hope you have liked this video. So, I will see you in my next video. Thank you. Now that the video is over, please stay with me for 30 more seconds. Now the vision of this channel is to create a repository of good quality videos with crystal clear explanation regarding various topics related to electrical engineering. Now if you want to help me spread the word, please share this video with anyone interested in these topics. The second thing is that for me education is a two way process. Therefore, if you have any doubts or suggestions regarding any of the videos or regarding the channel, please put them in the comments below. We can have a healthy discussion and that way we can build a strong community of electrical engineers. So that's it for today's video. So till I see you in the next time, it's me Varun signing off and have a great day. Thank you.